Hi, I am Justin, G0KSC from InnovAntennas and also the G0KSC.co.uk website. Okay, so I started off with a discussion on the quad variant which I um, produce, which is using the twin booms uh, and the tubular elements. And I said at the beginning that, you know, it might spill over into uh, a second part due to the fact that YouTube will accept videos of around 15 minutes long. Uh, this is now the third one and I felt it was quite important to do the third uh, as there were a few bits that I'd missed when I reviewed back on the first two uh, which I really thought it was important to get across and some of those was just some pictorial examples of, uh, of um, certain antennas and uh, how they look and how they can perform and how they can be manipulated. Now the first one here um, that I want to open up is a couple of the small uh, two meter uh, LFAs sorry LFAQs which I'll show you here in the diagram are orientated vertically and I've stacked them one above the other and you can see that there's a feed point on this side uh, on the top loop and a feed point on the other on the bottom loop so if you imagine that those are stacked on a, a mast and perhaps even uh, rear mounted so that the mast is behind them um, this could be for a repeater uh, or, or something like that on, on two meters of VHF or any similar application. Maybe it was even a commercial use. But um, through being able to manipulate the feed points, uh, distances, and with this uh, rectangular style loop, some interesting stuff happens. Actually, I'm just gonna put the, uh, the detail step size up to 0.1 of a degree for more granularity. So, when you're looking from above, so we're, we've now got the antennas like this and we're looking straight down on them. When you look at what, uh, what is produced, that's a very, very wide beam width. And as I mentioned before, beam width is controlled largely by the distance between the first and the last element in the array. And because if you recall on, on two meters, on the two meter band, these are just 14 centimeters apart, it means that the beam width can be very wide. When we stack that, uh, the, the pink lines denote the 3 dB beam width and you'll see it's a massive 121 degrees or 121.3 degrees so it's quite a wide uh, range obviously we've still got this at uh, 144.3 and there would be a, a little scaling involved to get up to 1. Uh, 144.5 or 144.6 or 7 or wherever you wanted it to be but uh, pretty much it's going to be the same the other interesting part is, is because of the arrangement of the, the, the stack and how it is, um, and bearing in mind that one of the other factors that I, I didn't mention before, uh, the reason that the top and the bottom uh, of the lap or, or, or the, uh, the loop or the sides in this case are the same distance is because you've got booms that are in a fixed position. So it's only the width or in this case the height that can change. So they're more like um, oblong Yagi elements, even the square ones operate this way. So let's have a look at the uh, elevation plot now uh, and see where we are. Now this is where it becomes more interesting because of the arrangement of the antennas, uh, the feed point locations and what have you, we've been able to um, arrange the antenna and optimize it in order to remove the symmetry deliberately this time. So there's very few down facing lobes so these lobes that would be looking down are far reduced so they'll pick up far less interference and noise from man-made um, generating devices you know, solar panels alarms uh, network switches and so on um, so in the in the near field and directly below the antenna that's much uh, much better uh, but the interesting thing is this if you look at the the forward lobe it's actually pulling it down down facing and this is an important factor for um, particularly in commercial antennas or where you have repeaters or, or beacons which are very very high up where they can be firing over the top of a lot of the near field uh, targets you know like broadcast radio stations for instance they want to down face slightly to get to uh, the, the maximum coverage for the, the audience that they have so with this with it down facing slightly you can see that it's got a, a, a down angle of sort of 4.1 degrees 
on a, um, a tower that's on top of a mountain several hundred or more feet high that's got a repeater or something like that it could be ideal and of course these could be arranged around the mast to give you some sort of um, unified uh, overall coverage so that's the, uh, the the first one the second one is that we had a, a discussion about uh, stacking and stacking distances and I know that a lot of the formulas that are out there are based around um, Yagi or traditional Yagi um, uh, formats and, and stacks. But this is one that's um, a four element that we produce, which is a more of a, a cubical quad. But similarly, when you look at this, all of the tops of the elements are in line for those two booms. And it's just the sides that are that are changed in length. So, uh, so it's more like the uh, traditional Yagi element in the the um, the width is changing rather than the whole size of the loop, and that makes it a lot easier to administer when you have these fixed position twin booms. So, as an individual antenna, I'm just going to put this to 0.1 degrees again. Uh, this is a pretty good and solid pattern. Um, it has good levels of gain 11.26 dBi in free space now when you think your ground gain if you've got uh, excellent ground gain uh, that's going to add 5 dB to that or somewhere in between for something less um, or a theoretical maximum of around 5 dB additional uh, and the front to back looks good but when you look at this in the elevation plane if you've got uh, anything in near field you've got a tower directly over the um, it might be over your shack or if it's on a commercial tower or something that's got a lot of equipment below it these lobes down facing lobes they're, they're quite a well down on the main lobe um, but it would still be ideal if they were tucked in a little so um, again because of the nature of the quad and the feed point and the width of the quad you can see that that's just down facing just a, a, a small amount its cursor angle is, is 0 0.1 degrees here but the interesting thing on this is the stack um, now, if you were looking at, this is a 6 meter band for instance, um, if you were to look at say stacking that uh, at 5 meters, so we copy all the wire, wires, 5 meters stacking distance, we can see that's how it looks pictorially. I'm going to leave the feed points as they are for the moment um, and look at this. Now, what you see is that 5, this is only a, a 4 meter long boom, so they're relatively short. So five meters in normal instances might be considered a, perhaps a little bit too much. Um, but what you can see from here is the, the gain increase is pretty good. But this um, lobe here, um, it looks a lot bigger than it was. It actually isn't. Um, it was just um, better than 15 dB. It's now just over 15 dB. What's, but what's the difference is, as we discussed in one of the previous emails where we were looking at oh, emails uh, one of the previous um, uh, videos where we was discussing uh, stacking these two forward lobes are a byproduct of the single an antenna performance because when you stack you compress that main lobe in that direction and the azimuth lobe or the the uh, lobe in the opposing plane will stay very similar so these side lobes are a, are a artifact of the original lobe which would have gone around here somewhere and because we've compressed that now, we compress that down, um, it makes these lobes look a little bit um, bigger. But there is something we can do with that. So, as I said, we might have considered that five meters was a, a little bit large. But let's try it at now at six meters as a stack and see where we get from here. So, now you can see that the lobe is below the 15 dB mark so it's improved but we've got this forward lobe growing a little as well we're now above 14 dB so uh, we've we've gone up and yet front to back is is uh, is better as well at 34 dB so that's that's not a bad uh, looking plot in that regard now if I go back and now uh, look at the elevation sorry the azimuth plane from above the antenna you can still see it's still pretty much a similar shape to what it was before a slight indentation in the front to back you know it's, it's improving that but all is looking pretty good so let's take off uh, again um, change plot type and then undo wires and I'm now going to stack these at a massive seven meters and see what that looks like so that you can see they're quite a distance apart but look at this you've 
that lobe directly above and below the antenna has improved again. It's now around 18 dB down on the main lobe. Yes, this one has increased a little bit, <clears throat> but that's more in the, the near far field. Uh, and again, gain is up now to 14.31. Um, front to back has started to be lost, but you know, if you was to play around with the figures on that between the sort of six and seven um, meters apart, you've got quite a substantial um, a, a amount of performance there from two relatively short antennas that are not going to need any guy in that can be put on a fairly substantial sized pair of twin booms and and I've got a great azimuth uh, coverage you know if we if we you look at it from uh, the, the 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 facts of the uh, the layout and where it is the 3 dB beam width 52 degrees so you've got 14.3 dB of of gain over a you know a 3 dB beam width for 52 degrees that's not to be sniffed at that's a pretty good um, result there so all the only thing that you need of course is the um, is the vertical space to put between them and of course whereas that uh, that lobe in the elevation plane is perhaps uh, just a, a little bit distorted or, or lopsided um, you can see there's not quite so much of an indentation as there is on here uh, that's easily fixed by uh, changing our um, feed point location so we can see here it's 9 there 14 here so I'll change the wire 9 to 14 so now the, the feed points are much closer together these uh, loops are 1.4 meters in height so you've, you've now got these you know closer together 1.4 meters together so there's less cable that's got to run between the two antennas to join them together um, and then when we run the elevation plot now you can see that there's much more symmetry in the plot uh, it looks fairly even all the way through so that's the two models that uh, I wanted to show you um, and then also I had some some more pictures we had looked before at um, one of these pictures which is this one which showed the the two um, uh, quad stacks with the parasitic element between them this was the one where the Yagi's <laughs> Yagi's quads are 110 ohm feed point so we've got a quarter wave of 75 ohm coax in order to um, get them to 50 ohm and then quarter wave for the stacking so it's it's even lengths of uh, 75 ohm cable uh, to join those two together to give a common 50 ohm feed point but uh, there's a, a closer or closer up photo which I wanted to show which is this one so you can see here a little bit closer uh, you know of the, the detail of how they looked um, there's a small tail on this one because of, of what I was doing on that uh, particular instance is testing the one antenna to see what sort of influence uh, the bottom antenna and this one as a single parasitic would have on the array uh, next one is uh, a two element a six meter version this is a uh, the six meter version of uh, the, the the two element quad but this one is a direct 50 ohm fed um, quad so the two are much much closer together so it just has the under 7 db of um, forward gain but of course because the front and rear element are closer together you've got that wider beam width again so that's uh, that's that one um, this one here is the more flattened <coughs> version again for six meters but this one is um, um, rather than for six meters this one is for 28 megahertz this is of 10 meters so that's 3.2 meter long booms you can see that you know they're they're I think they're only um, inch or inch and a quarter something like that but of course they don't need to be very big because you've only got a meter and a half or so either side of the boom um, but very good performance as a result and very wide um, beam width the same um, one down here on the the small two meter uh, LFAQ that we were looking at where we were stacking them vertically uh, one above the other this one is in a, a rather special location at the Oscar Echo 2 X-Ray Tango Radio uh, 144 megahertz beacon where um, if you're hearing that in, in Europe anywhere uh, this is the uh, the antenna that's in use there and again because of the construction uh, using the, the the tubes and being very broad banded and thus forgiving 
it still works fine when it's covered in water as you can see there's water droplets on it uh, or whether it's ice or, or anything else on there um, what else have we got here uh, because of the nature of the the, the booms uh, rear mounting is a lot more forgiving as well you can see there's uh, this here is a, an EME system of five elements for 144 megahertz all of which are rear mounted and very rigid obviously that would need some balancing at the back there uh, in order to help out the rotator uh, but they're all still fairly lightweight um, so there's not um, too much to counteract there as needed um, but it, you know it still works uh, very well indeed and of course because they're relatively short quads you're getting a, a lot more benefit than what you would do in terms of gain for that that boom length and something that's very very solid you know it's not going to go anywhere in some serious uh, wind conditions um, what else have I got that I haven't showed you uh, this one is a couple of the higher loops again uh, these are for 50 megahertz and these are a, a wide spaced five elements these are um, a, a, a quite long I think they're about seven meters 7.5 meters long and these are at uh, DK8 November Echo so again in Europe if you hear them in the uh, in the summer um, uh, then you'll see them spotting all sorts of stuff from all over the place and maybe the first into North America and, and Japan from Central Europe as well on occasions uh, but uh, but they do work uh, work very well uh, coming back to the five element on two meters here's one for portable uh, in the videos on this channel you'll see that there's one of me outside the inner antennas factory uh, holding the two bars on uh, one of the LFAQs pulling them together to make it flat and that's what makes this antenna so uh, portable once you've got the mast out of it and because there's hose clamps holding the ends you can effectively flat pack the thing strap it on your back and off you go uh, roving or uh, or portable ops so it's fairly good for that uh, just a couple more this is a commercial version there's um, four of these uh, these are for higher end of VHF in Australia and it's tracking wildlife uh, is what uh, the purpose of these are uh, and you can see again in each of these instances they're all um, rear mounted and finally uh, this is the the four element uh, LFAQ that we were stacking at seven meters apart uh, so fairly compact again as I said it's only four meters it can be very light it only needs to be around one uh, inch uh, boom but that's pretty much it right I better close this because we're over 17 minutes not sure it'll upload all the best thanks for watching please subscribe